Hi, this is Charlie Montetuiello with Blue Bear Flutes. Uh, of course, our website, bluebearflutes.com. Uh, if you are wondering if we sell flutes, please go there before asking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have a lot of people that, that email me questions like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I'm like, I have a video for that. Or they say, do you sell these? And I've heard that a bunch of times. And I'm like, you know, here we are. But anyway, uh, seriously though, if you get a chance, check out our Instagram. There may be things we're doing on Instagram that we're not doing right here on YouTube or not on our website and you're really missing out. I wish I was making money off of Instagram, but I'm not. All I'm doing is showing you some really cool stuff we have going on. On occasion, you get to see some neat people that we know, people we've met, places we've gone, places I've played the flute. Uh, it's just too much to miss out on. And if you don't have an Instagram account, they really should be sponsoring this video, but they're not. Uh, they really should because I'm going to tell you, even if you don't have an Instagram account, you can look on the website for a little while, but you can't look at the whole thing without going through Instagram. Although there is an app at the bottom of my website where you can see most of our Instagram. Still better to have an account. Anyway, so today we are making the easiest to make Native American flute in the entire world. I mean, this is really like 99.8% botch proof. It's really just too easy to do this. And uh, the reason I wanted to share this with you, you have a lot of people out there showing you how to make flutes and how to you know, make different kinds of instruments. And then there's a very small group of us that show you how to make Native American flutes. Of course, I've probably got quite a few videos on that. Um, actually, we've got a lot of videos. I don't want to sell myself short. The truth is, we, when we started posting videos on how to make flutes on YouTube, uh, there were a couple of people that followed behind us. The same thing with my book on flute making. I'm not the first person to put out a book on flute making or the first person on YouTube to make flutes, but we make an awful, awful lot of them. And people who follow us know that. Oh my gosh, we make a lot of flutes. Anyway, so the reason I wanted to share this with you, though, is because this is probably the easiest flute you could ever be able to play that would be the easiest for you to make. When I was a kid, I took a piece of PVC, I drilled a hole up here, a couple fingerings, wherever I wanted them, and I tried to blow in it. And because I had not learned how to make the embouchure to make a side-blown flute play, I was not able to do it. The Native American flute was something that kind of helped a lot of people. Myself, of course, I learned the Native flute after playing the Silver Flute. Uh, however, it helped a lot of people learn how to play an instrument in general. And for that reason, I thought, well, this is a perfect way to share with you guys something that you might can do uh, if you can't. Don't stress, I'm sure there's a way around it, uh, wink. But uh, anyway, this is so simple, anybody could do it, it really is. Even if you had to drill these holes out by hand with an auger, or maybe even with one of these little fancy drill tools here, I probably should have left in the video, but this is just a little handheld deal. You know, there's nothing to this. They also sell PVC augers, which you can do this number here with. I did these holes with a certain type of drill I'm going to show you in just a second, which many of you probably are familiar with already. Uh, but this is a plug style. Any of you who have my book on how to make Native American flutes, uh, The Art of Native American Flute Making, any of you have that book, you notice that this is a plug style type of flute. It still plays. I'm going to put this in my mouth. This is dangerous. Do not try sticking something sharp in your mouth unless you know exactly what you're doing. I was one of those guys in the circus that used to swallow the sword. I'm pretty good at it, so don't, don't try this at home. I'm a pro. The reason this is poking out in the first place is really for demonstration because I can pull it out. All this is is a PVC tube with some holes drilled in it in a very uh, auspicious location and uh, a little fancy something up here that's not really that difficult to make. Unlike the st standard Native American flute, which you have to make a track in, uh, to make it play properly or you can make the track in your block but it's still this is super easy so uh, the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to show you what the fingerings are the size of the holes what kind of pvc i used um, don't fret if you can't find this exact kind of pvc no lie i've had people in other videos say has anybody had a difficulty finding schedule 20 pvc well if you call it Schedule 20, chances are people at your retail store that you looked at it for don't know what that is. For whatever reason, the old crew like myself have died out. Uh, we've either retired from those companies or whatever, and uh, you just won't find anybody typically calling it Schedule 20. This is Schedule 20. It is irrigation line. You'll know it's Schedule 20 because it's incredibly thin-walled. And on here, it, this particular one is made by Charlotte Pipe Company. Uh, they have a website on here. I think I bought this at Home Depot, but if not, Lowe's carries a version of it. Uh, Ace Hardware also has a version of it. This is uh, three quarters inch P2 
PVC. It says 1120 here. None of that really matters. SDR 21. I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, PR 200 PSI. That's how much pressure I think it's got. Uh, at 23 degrees Celsius. NSF is probably what this stuff is. PWG. Who knows? You know, this isn't made to sell this product to me. Uh, I'm not, hey man, can I get some PWD? This is, this is irrigation line is what this is. Uh, it's very thin walled. The reason it's thin walled is because it's inexpensive. Schedule 40 is higher in price. When I was a kid, you had options. You could buy a schedule, what looked like schedule 10. I don't even know if we called it that. Schedule 20, schedule 40, and schedule 80. This stuff is bulletproof. You know, that I don't even know if you can get that anymore, probably because it's bulletproof. Um, but, uh, but anyway, schedule 20, simple irrigation line uh, tubing, and it's three quarters of an inch in diameter. What you want to do is, if you can get a hold of a piece of that, you can use Schedule 40. I'm going to tell you, the measurements are going to be just a little different. Don't feel hesitant doing it. It's still possible with what I'm going to show you today. This entire piece is roughly 14 and a half inches long. It's uh, actually a little over 14 and a half, but my bottom note's a little flat, so I probably should have made it 14 and a half inches long to start with. I'm measuring, now that we're going to talk about the location of these holes, from the top uh, of the flute here. So this first hole is about one inch from the top, one inch to the center. It is a little bit shy of that, but we're okay. The next hole here is about five and three quarters of an inch, okay? The next hole is six and what looks like, I want to give you all as perfect as possible, I think that's about five eighths of an inch, okay? So six and five eighths of an inch from this part of the flute here down to the next hole down there. The next one we've got is eight and looks like three eighths. I'm just kind of eyeballing this stuff here. So eight and three eighths of an inch. That's for this hole. The next hole is nine. Let's just pretend and call it a half. It'll play just fine if you make it nine and a half. Next one's ten and a half. Okay. And then like I said, even though you're a little bit past 14 and a half. My bottom note's a little flat on this one, so I'd suggest calling it exactly 14 and a half. Okay, you can call it 14 and 5 eighths if you want to. 14 and a half should work. The thing about using any PVC, and if you're gonna use Schedule 20 or Schedule 40, or if you can find some Schedule 80, which I don't, like I said, it's been a while, but uh, you gotta find out what the inside diameter of it is. This one here is 23 millimeters which is sitting almost perfectly on the right side, not quite even a millimeter in, of the 7 eighths of an inch size. This dowel is 7 eighths of an inch. Check this out. It'd make an excellent pop gun, just like your granddad told you how to make. It would be perfect for that. Well, maybe a little bit. You have to put your little leather stopper on it because it's not sealing up so perfectly. Uh, so what I initially did, in the one you heard me playing, was I took a... Uh, Let's see, I think this was a uh, one inch dowel and I sanded it down until it was just snug. You see how snug that is? It won't fall out. This one here is made with this dowel I just showed you. It will fall all the way through if you drop it in there. However, there's ways around it. You can stick you a piece of tape around it here. You can put a decal around it. You can do a number of things there just so that you have a way to seal it inside of this flute. Um, the reason you need to seal it is because if there is an air leak, and let me show you, if you look on the left and right side of that plug, you'll see kind of an a area between the plug and the side wall of the PVC, and that is not preferable for making a flute. Having said that, when you're trying to test the sucker, and testing it is very important. This is the part that most of you mostly don't get a chance to, uh, to get figured out right, but in the testing portion of this, you need to be able to push the plug in to a certain position. And I say certain position, let me use the end of this thing. You need to be able to push it in so that it is exactly, <laughs> it's not exactly, you need to be able to, to determine what's the best position for the end of the plug versus this edge of the sound hole. This edge of the sound hole here, um, we don't want to push it in too far because it, it will just overpass how much um, of the sound hole it's covering or that it's that it's trying to blow into. And if we put it back here, it's actually focusing more of the air to the inside of the PVC. So I put it right about there, and I can test it. If you want to see what it sounds like, I'm holding the plug with my finger. 
it makes kind of a sound, so it's not doing too bad. But it's so much easier when you can push this in here. And then if you push it a little too far, you hear it's a little airy. We can go back. And then it actually doesn't play all the notes exactly right. It's a little area there too. There's a sweet spot in here. You just gotta be able to play with it a little bit to get it exactly the way you want it. And like I said, that's pretty much, uh, we're talking about a millimeter on the inside of the hole, maybe two millimeters at the most. So the edge of the plug has passed the edge of this hole by about two millimeters that way, okay? The last thing I need to show you before we cut another one of these out and start drilling is the size of the holes. Something a lot of you probably wondering, what are the size of those holes? So this first one here, I believe, is about a 3 8 if I remember right. That is a 3 8 hole, give or take, right there, okay? So 3 8 these others, I believe, are 5 16 That's what it looks like. There we go, 5 16 Okay, so uh, 3 8 sound hole, 5 16 diameter fingerings. You may find a different combination that works out better for you. I've got other models that I've made. I've made quite a few uh, over the years, small ones, large ones, this kind, that kind, you know, and I've made, uh, as you've seen in some of my other videos, like how to make a low bass Native American flute. I've made them in the key of low F and A and all kinds of stuff out of PVC. Uh, just anything you can imagine you can do. And likewise, like I say, I try to cover as many bases as I can. But if you make a smaller hole here, it might make a slightly different quality sound. If you make smaller holes here, they'll go a little flat. If you make them larger, they'll go a little sharp. It depends on what you feel like. You can kind of play around with it and see how it works. But uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and mark this piece of PVC. And instead of giving myself the measurements like I just gave them to you, I'm kind of old fashioned and like to just put me some dots on this piece of pipe here, just like that. Back in the day, when people used to copy somebody else's flute that they wanted to learn how to make, this is what they would do. When I say back in the day, you can go to any time period and find people doing the same kind of thing. And then we've got to draw a line down here at the bottom. This is where I'm going to cut it off. And if you remember, I told you it should be probably 14 and a half instead of 5 eighths. I might trim it up a little bit once we get there. And let's start with this. Go cut this off. Once again, I'm going to use some power tools to do this stuff. You don't have to use power tools. There are saws that you are able to use for PVC. There's a PVC cutter. This is the hardest type that there is. You have to go around and around and around and go the other direction. They have a ratchet one, and you can ratchet that one down and just lock right into it. I don't cut that much PVC anymore, so unless I have bandsaws, so there's no sense in me buying one of those other cutters if it's going to stay. It's a specialty tool. You know, you can buy it if you want to. But uh, if you're making a bunch of PVC flutes, that's a good reason to have it. So uh, let's go over there, cut that, see what happens, drill some holes out. I'll show you that drill bit I mentioned, and I'll show you what it takes to make this thing well enough where it'll play and how to cut that plug. That's the hard part for just about everybody. Okay, as a little bonus here, something I like to do, of course you see me drill these holes out. This is a 3 16 drill bit. It doesn't really matter as long as it's smaller than the perspective size you want it to be because we have this taper drill that's going to uh, help size it up for us. And I could have used this over at the drill press and I could have started the hole with it, but it's easier for me to drill it like this and then kind of go from there. Um, and then by hand is good, drill press is good, it's all good, you know, so. And if you have one of those hand augers, that's even better, I think. It does a much more accurate job and a cleaner job because uh, that's what that thing's made for using in PVC. 
This one's still got the writing on the back of it. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to sand this PVC. I am in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to breathe in PVC dust, you know. And honestly, I could put a mask on. I recommend anybody that's going to do this, definitely use a mask if you can find one today. So, just kind of sand this stuff off. And it also leaves a nice texture. I think my sandpaper's wore out. Sometimes it's good to start with a more coarse grade of sandpaper too and sand, but I can stand here and do this all day. Um, I can also use my belt sander. But anyway, I sand this off, and the good thing about sanding the PVC, the one benefit of it, is that it leaves a nice texture on the PVC. Once this PVC starts picking up the oil off of your hands on it, in that texture, it's going to make it look kind of natural. It'll make it look a little more woody colored. You can also stain this to a very, very minor degree with things like tea and coffee and, and unnatural stains, of course, as well. Uh, but when you open the pores up with the sanding, it gives it an opportunity to change its color a little bit. I will let you know, too, that if you do change its color and you play it for a while, the oil in your fingers may take the stain off of it. So FYI. Um, that's why this kind of weird semi quasi natural color is good enough for me. The next thing you're going to want to do is, like I said, make these holes just a wee bit bigger. You know, this is taper step bit that I've got here. Real easy stuff. Look at that. So easy to drill into this. You could probably have done this with a hand drill. But there again, my experience has led me to do this kind of thing. I'm trying to go to the side here a little bit because that hole is out of alignment. But it's not going to play, it's not going to cause it to play any differently. It's just to somebody who's OCD like myself. It's <laughs> Why is that whole lot of alignment? Okay, I'm looking at it sideways now and it looks better. Anyway, that's about a quarter of an inch hole. Like I said, we start off with 3 sixteenths. Let me go down one more step on this sucker. There we go. One more step here. One more step there. One of the benefits of sanding is it'll take off anything that's left on the outside. But if you notice, it cleaned it up pretty good. I can look down inside of here and see there's not only shavings, but also some uh, burr inside of the hole here, inside of it. There's a way you can get it out with a little, uh, like a uh, craft knife, hobby knife, or you can, uh, don't melt it out. That's a bad idea. Don't melt it out, Charlie, don't melt it out. But, uh, but anyway, you, you can um, use a craft knife. You can run some sandpaper up inside of there if you want to. It's not completely 100% necessary. The amount of change it's going to inflict on the sound of the flute is so minute, you wouldn't know it if you did change it. So, anyway, first hole here is a uh, quarter. Next one is five sixteenths. Okay, last one is our big old three eighths. And even this little bit even has some uh, markers on it to tell you what size it is, too, which is super handy. So, we got quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths. Okay, easy peasy. So if you'll notice here is basically the same thing what we're looking at here, except this one's got a recess. You can do this by hand with sandpaper if you don't have a belt sander. But you know what I've got? That's right. So I'm gonna go do it with a belt sander. Okay, one thing, if you notice, I didn't use a belt sander. I used my, my uh, rotary sander orbital. But uh, one thing that I will warn you about, and it's right here, when PVC, especially a very thin area of PVC gets warm, it will disfigure and misshape. And I hope that I didn't screw this one up in the process because when making a flute in general, you want the, the splitting edge, which is what I'm whittling on right now with this hobby knife. Um, you want the splitting edge to be very sharp. And a lot of times the best way to make it sharp is to make it thin. And PVC is a very rigid material, but because it is a cousin of plastic, um, it tends to get hot and misshape a little bit. So if you see this area right here, where it looks like a little smiley face or maybe a beard, it, uh, it got a little warm and started to shrink up some, but it's not bad. So I'm thinking we might have survived here. 
And once again, I can't warn you enough. If you think this is dangerous, don't try this at home. It's most everybody in at least one state and two different countries I can think of. Um, PVC is nothing to be laughed at. It is something we have in our everyday world. We're not sure yet if it's safe or not. We won't know for a couple more thousand years. And let's see here. There we go. Anyway, I think that's got most of the burr out of the inside. When y'all weren't looking, I snuck off and sanded the inside of it. I wasn't going to tell you, but I feel like I'm lying if I don't. Just clean this up a little bit. Now, I will tell you, too, you can, with, an, with a hobby knife, <laughs> I almost said exactly knife. With a hobby knife, yeah, they should probably fund me. Um, but anyway, um, you can actually make this a square hole if you wanted to make that instead of a round hole. A square hole will produce a little bit better quality sound. But having said that, instead of using my plug that I made out of the small diameter dowel, which kind of comes in and out, let's say I just, I've got tape and decals. I just don't feel like going to get them right now. Um, and if you, if you have to, and you have to use out of a smaller dowel, once again, this is a seven eighths going inside of a, a three quarters of an inch piece of PVC schedule 20. You might find that a seven eighths fits a little bit tighter inside of a piece of schedule 40. For that reason, you might do the same thing. The only trick is between using schedule 40 and the schedule 20, number one, the 20 is thinner, so it resonates better. Um, but just make sure that the splitting edge here, that's this edge of your sound hole, is relatively thin and sharp. That's the key. And if you were to have done this by hand with either a chainsaw file or some type of round file, uh, a half round uh, file, or even just sandpaper, and if, if you were to sand this back and forth, as long as you didn't get it hot, you would have actually done a better job than what I did on my orbital sander. My uh, up and down spiraling sander gets a little warm, so that's a problem. Like I say, you could take some decal or some uh, vinyl stick-on paper. You could do a lot of things and just kind of tape around this so that it is a little thicker. You don't want to do anything to damage this flat area. And right now, before we get into measuring how to cut this dowel, I'm going to tell you, because this is a finishing part of the dowel, this is about should be about a half inch wide where if you see the crest of the edge of the plug here comes up on both sides it needs to be slightly wider than the actual hole that is the sound hole okay so the sound hole is three eighths my edge crest here is about a half maybe just a it's almost exactly a half and then I, I did this one little thing I just kind of lightly sanded it right there so that it had like a little drop off. That helps the air to push a little bit of the air to the inside of the flute, and it makes it less likely to jump octave on the bottom note. This is something I've talked about with traditional Native American flutes, whereas this one here is kind of a, a modern hybrid. But if I were to have, uh, it's pollen season by the way, if y'all heard that, sorry. Uh, but anyway, if you were to have um, put some decal or some tape, or even duct tape would probably work on the outside of this thing, um, you could actually sand this piece down flat by holding it against a piece of sandpaper or go around in circles. There's a number of ways you can make this plug. I'm going to show you uh, the plug portion of it in just a second, but just so that you know what we're doing with the plug, um, let's say if it's tight, you could push it in there right there. It does not sound bad at all. I think I'm going to go ahead and glue that sucker in. I'm very happy with its location and with the sound it's making. So if y'all forgive me, run back here and grab some super glue. Before I glue this thing in, I like to look on the inside of it and see that it's not twi twisted this way or that way. I like to see that the track area, let's see if you can see some of it here. I don't know if you can see this inside, but I like to see that this is flat and level all the way across in relationship to the position of this hole. They need to be so similar. And there again, I'm sitting on this plug. I'm sitting about uh, two millimeters in front of this back edge of the sound hole. Not this edge here. That one won't make any sound if you push it all the way in. And just to make sure I didn't wiggle it any before I glued it, uh, y'all keep looking at this. I'm going to play it. I think that sounds really good. Now, what I'm going to do with the super glue is drop it right down here 
When I say super glue, it can be crazy glue. It can be, yeah, no, I touched it. Don't ever do that. Y'all, don't touch super glue. That is bad juju. It's a terrible habit to get into. You'll always be touching it from then on. I'm just kidding. After you touch it once, you usually think to yourself, I'm not going to do this. And it's like touching fire. Don't, don't mess with it. It's not hot, granted, but it will stick your fingers together and make quite a mess on anything that you touch thereafter. So I'm going to hold it up like this and hope not too much of it drips on my nice, clean table saw. But I'm rolling it around here, just trying to seal up the edges. The worst thing to do, looks like we're out of that tube. That's enough, though. Um, the worst thing to do is to put this flute up to your mouth now if it's got any super glue coming out of it, or crazy glue, or uh, super pigmento, or cyanacrylate, or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to let this dry for just a second. I do see some glue coming out of the edge. That's a good thing. That means it's sealing and getting into the cracks and pores of that sucker. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how, while this is drying, which it dries pretty quick, I'm going to show you how to cut this plug so that you get it right every time. That's really the hardest part of making this particular kind of whistle, if you would, uh, is getting the, the plug in the right shape and the right angle. I'm guessing, just by looking at it, it's between 17 and 26 degrees, somewhere in the airfoil range, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, we're gonna start on this end so that y'all can watch it from start to finish and we'll just see what it takes to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, we have a 3 quarters inch diameter dowel and if you were using a one inch and you sanded it down you can sand it down by hand so that it fits perfectly inside of your PVC there okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about two inches of it but I'm not going to cut it straight across this way just yet I'm actually going to cut it from this corner to what I would consider actually kind of an imaginary corner down here I can draw it for you I'm going to cut it from the very top corner of the dowel to about a two inch mark. How do I come up with these numbers? I don't know. Anyway, so you can draw this if you really have to. You could do this with a hacksaw if you're, listen to me, I said saw. <laughs> that sounded like one of my kids when they were younger. You can do this with a hacksaw if you have to. Um, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can even do it if you only have a belt sander or even better yet, if you only have a piece of sandpaper. I can show you just a moment how to do this. So. What I'm going to do, once again, I don't normally mark these because my marking skills are not that great in the straight line-ish type criteria. But what I did was I drew an imaginary line, which I guess if it's in real life, it's not imaginary anymore, over here to the other corner. So one corner to that corner on a diagonal. And that's basically, I have to drop my marker, that's basically what I'm going to cut out here. I may get it a little off because my cutting is about as straight as my drawing is. Um, I work on the back end of most everything. I usually try to perfect it after it's cut. And that's just really, you know, my idea is the end result. What am I looking for? Am I looking for something that has more hands-on time in it, which makes it more perfect, or something that has less hands-on time in it that makes it less accurate? So that's why I just really don't, I don't care so much about setting up a jig to cut this sideways. Now, I do have a jig in here for cutting smaller sized dowels. Uh, we use it to cut uh, my eagle whistle plugs and uh, maybe one of our other whistle plugs that we make. And I use that jig all the time. I don't cut those out by hand. I use it on my table saw and I just cut all day long, cut stuff like that. But on this, like I say, hands free, you know, or free hand, <laughs> keep your hands to yourself. Anyway, well, let's see what happens. The line is pretty straight. It's not bad, and I did go a little bit beyond my my mark there, but I think it's not too bad. It really isn't. I kind of extrapolated a little bit, and you see what I'm doing. Basically, I split a dowel um, diagonally from zero point to two inches, and um, that's what we've got there. I'm going to belt sand this just a little bit, and and basically uh, that's that's your plug. And then I'm going to show you a way that you can do it by hand if you absolutely have to.
Okay, so we have two extra plugs here for two more PVC flutes. And once again, when I decide to use them, I may put me a piece of stripping on some on the back side of it of some kind. And if I get any on the top of it, just sand it off. It's that simple. Um, and then when you have that stuff set in there, once you get it pushed into place and you get it to play properly, then it's time to take it on the next step, which we're about to do. Easy peasy. Um, but uh, I want to show you how you can come up with this plug. And I've made other videos on making smaller versions of this flute. Uh, our four-hole PVC, four-hole whistle is a great option there. Um, and uh, this is how one of the ways that you can make the plug for it. If you have a belt sander like I just used, you can do it on there. Let me tell you, belt sanders are dangerous. We all in the shop sand our knuckles, our fingers. Usually I'm missing some fingernails somewhere because I've sanded it off. Um, it's a dangerous way to go. It really is. You can sand a dowel on there. You can build a jig to sand a dowel. For those of you who don't know a jig, it's like in a wood shop. It's an extra little something, something that helps you do something different. So, um, you know, anything that you clamp onto something, to add onto something, to hold something for you, that's all. We call it a jig. It's, you know... <laughs> Anyway, um, you can actually do this on the sandpaper, and you just want to sand it at an angle. I will be here all day on this wore-out piece of 220 sandpaper, which was just a random one I picked up in the shop. I'll be here all day doing this number, so that's why I recommend using a really coarse piece of paper. Maybe a piece of 120 or some 80 might be good to start with. And after you get it down so far, you can come back to a piece of fine paper. But you see that little angle that I sanded on it there? All you got to do is sand it so that the angle comes back to here. And then it barely touches it right there. And most importantly, that you are able to get that distance in between here. Now, if you make a smaller uh, flute, you need a smaller plug. You need a smaller distance between here and there. It needs to be just slightly wider than the width of your sound hole. So, like I said, if you looked inside of there a moment ago, you could see that it's just slightly wider. There's a couple of reasons for that, but that's what it takes to make it play. Right now, I'm going to take this over to my my bandsaw and chop it off and I'm going to sand the end of it and I may trim up the bottom just a little bit to make sure that I got it uh, as in tune as I want it to be. Granted, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a PVC flute. Your breath actually changes the tone, the amount of pressure you use, changes the tone of the flute minorly, so that's something to consider. I'm going to chop this off and then we'll come right back and play it and see what it sounds like. So I went ahead and cleaned it out, sanded the bottom of it just a little bit. Try to get the, the burr out of these holes a little bit, which is tricky. You know, there's ways to do that. There's actually PVC burring tools and all kinds of stuff that you can do. Um, there is a little piece of fiber up in here I've been meaning to get out because that tiny little piece right there may actually affect the sound. But down inside of the flute, not a chance. I'm looking around here just to see. I'm trying to get different light and different everything so I can see. Make sure there's no weird shapes of, of little stragglers poking down in there and it looks like it's okay and got it all hand sanded and sanded all that logo off and stuff and it's left kind of a grainy I doubt you can see it in the video too well but it's left kind of a grainy texture to it just a little bit I've done everything to PVC to try to get it to recolor the way that I, I felt like would be good painted it stained it used wood stain used um, alcohol based stain used even PVC stain which I wasn't happy with uh, there's so many different things you can do and it turns out whatever color material it's made out of is really the best color to leave it in. Uh, you can get, uh, this is cold water PVC, mind you it is uh, Schedule 20, um, but you can get hot water PVC which is kind of a cream yellow color. It's about the color of these dowels honestly in comparison, um, but uh, that's a little bit different color. I've made videos using that as well. Um, if you haven't seen it, look at my break break apart flute that I made out of PVC, which you can break apart, stick in a backpack or in your back pocket, and you can take it just about anywhere. That's the good thing about this flute, and it's really the best thing about it. It does have a pretty clear sound for just a, you know, under a dollar build here, <laughs> uh, but uh, it does have a pretty clear sound. But the thing that I like about it is it's not that it's disposable by any means, but if I throw it in my backpack and it gets crushed, I sit on it, get slammed the airplane door, who, who knows what happens. Um, if that happens and it's broken, it didn't cost me a lot for one thing, but more importantly, I can make another one. And honestly, I can make this flute in less than five minutes. I've got videos on making actual wood flutes in less than five minutes. This one I can make easily in under five minutes. Um, so uh, like I say, this one here, it's pretty good, you know, for being just a PVC piece of PVC with six holes on the top of it. If you feel the need 
to make a sixth hole right there. Number one, that's ludicrous because that's not where that sixth hole belongs. Um, but if you feel the need to put one there and then put something around it so that you never use it, go for it. If you don't want to do that and look like a big doofus, I'm just kidding. I'm just y'all don't look like a big doofus. Um, but uh, anyway, just kidding there. If y'all uh, feel like you want to play the note that is on a six hole flute that's right here on this hole, it's a half step note. All you do is uncover all these, uncover that one, and cover this one. And it's. You can play that note there that's on a modern six hole flute, I call it. I've got videos about that, so look into it if you need to. But if you need to play that note, it's right there. And there's no worry about drilling an extra hole that 99% of the time playing typical Native American sounding music or Native American style music, if you need to call it that, um, you know, it's it's not going to be a necessary fingering because <laughs> is not in the scale. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed making this little flute. It's the simplest thing and so easy. I've actually recorded music from a PVC flute. Uh, so easy to play, so easy to make, and why in the world doesn't every everybody in the world have one of these? So uh, thank you so much for sticking through this video with me. I know I talk a lot. And as my wife points out, if people want to learn something, they better listen. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I learned everything I know from her. Uh, so if you've stuck with me this far, thank you so much. Thanks for watching our videos. We have quite a few others. You can skip through and get the parts out that you need, but it's a lot funner this way. Uh, hopefully I didn't waste your time. And if I did, you know, not my problem. <laughs> no, but if you would subscribe, like the video, make a comment below. I only said all that stuff for my regular subscribers. They appreciate me making my funny comments, and I appreciate them so very much. And anybody else who's watched this video, even Mr. Thumbs Down, I'm so glad you haven't been thumbs down on me lately. You probably will in this video, but we miss you. Y'all take care.